Thursday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Tobit. When the angel Raphael and Tobiah had entered Medea and were getting close to Ecbatana, Raphael said to the boy, Tobiah, my brother, he replied, Here I am. He said, Tonight we must stay with Raguel, who is a relative of yours. He has a daughter named Sarah. So he brought him to the house of Raguel, whom they found seated by his courtyard gate. They greeted him first. He said to them, Greetings to you too, brothers. Good health to you and welcome. And he brought them into his home. Raguel slaughtered a ram from the flock and gave them a cordial reception. When they had bathed and reclined to eat, Tobiah said to Raphael, Brother Azariah, ask Raguel to let me marry my kinswoman Sarah. Raguel overheard the words, so he said to the boy, Eat and drink and be merry tonight, for no man is more entitled to marry my daughter Sarah than you, brother. Besides, not even I have the right to give her to anyone but you, because you are my closest relative. But I will explain the situation to you very frankly. I have given her in marriage to seven men, all of whom were kinsmen of ours, and all died on the very night they approached her. But now, son, eat and drink. I am sure the Lord will look after you both. Tobiah answered, I will eat or drink nothing until you set aside what belongs to me. Raguel said to him, I will do it. She is yours according to the decree of the book of Moses. Your marriage to her has been decided in heaven. Take your kinswoman. From now on, you are her love and she is your beloved. She is yours today and ever after. And tonight, son, may the Lord of heaven prosper you both. May he grant you mercy and peace. Then Raguel called his daughter Sarah and she came to him. He took her by the hand and gave her to Tobiah with the words, Take her according to the law. According to the decree written in the book of Moses, she is your wife. Take her and bring her back safely to your father. And may the God of heaven grant both of you peace and prosperity. Raguel then called Sarah's mother and told her to bring a scroll so that he might draw up a marriage contract stating that he gave Sarah to Tobiah as his wife, according to the decree of the Mosaic law. Her mother brought the scroll, and Raguel drew up the contract to which they affixed their seals. Afterward, they began to eat and drink. Later, Raguel called his wife Edna and said, My love, prepare the other bedroom and bring the girl there. She went and made the bed in the room as she was told and brought the girl there. After she had cried over her, she wiped away the tears and said, Be brave, my daughter. May the Lord grant you joy in place of your grief. Courage, my daughter. Then she left. When the girl's parents left the bedroom and closed the door behind them, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, My love, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. She got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. And they began to say, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praised be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam, and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two the human race descended. You said, It is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen, and went to bed for the night. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. 
Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Thursday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from the book of Tobit, chapter 6, verses 10 and 11, chapter 7, verse 1, B, C, D, and E, and verses 9 to 17, chapter 8, verses 4 to 9a. Tobiah, Tobit's son, has been sent to collect a debt that is owed him in Ekbatana, which is in Media, the other side of Persia. God sends the archangel Raphael to guide him, although Raphael doesn't identify himself as an archangel. As they approach the place where they're going, Raphael tells Tobiah that they're approaching the house of Raguel, who has a daughter named Sarah. When they arrive there, Tobiah asks to marry Sarah. Now remember, Sarah's been married seven times, and every time she got married, her bridegroom would die on the night of the wedding, killed by a demon. When Tobiah asks Raguel to marry Sarah, Raguel tells him everything that's happened so that he's not cheating Tobiah in any way. Tobiah decides to go along with the marriage. And on the way, Raphael had gotten Tobiah to go fishing. He caught a fish, took out parts of the fish, which he burned with the incense, which kept the demon away. Furthermore, when they're ready to go to bed, Sarah and Tobiah pray before they go to bed because they recognize that this marriage is not just about them. It involves God too, and certainly it involves God in the fact that Raphael was sent to protect them. But it also involves God in the idea that God had instituted marriage. God had said it's not good for man to be alone, that he should have a partner. And so they place their marriage in the hands of God to protect them and to bless them. The Gospel is from Mark 12, 28 to 34. It's a continuation of those challenges that we've been hearing about from the Pharisees, the Herodians, Sadducees. In this case, a scribe asked Jesus, which is the greatest of the commandments? Jesus responds with the Shema Israel, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God is Lord alone. You love him with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, what does it mean to love the Lord with your heart? It means to love the Lord with your intellect because the Jewish people believed that you thought with your heart. With your soul, you love the Lord even in times of persecution, till they rip the soul right out of your body. With your strength means to love the Lord with your physical possessions, that you dedicate everything to the service of God and neighbor. And with your mind, it means to love the Lord with your conscience, that you try to be single-hearted, that you serve the Lord without any holding back. And then we're to love our neighbor as ourself. Well, even the scribe recognizes that this is truly the great commandment. And he says that, and Jesus responds, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Notice at the very end of the passage, no one dares ask him any more questions. He's been able to respond very well. Remember, in ancient Israel, cleverness was very important. It was a sign that you were speaking through the Spirit of God. And Jesus has shown that cleverness all throughout these challenges. At this point, they have nothing left to say because they realize 
They don't have the answers. Jesus does. And may God bless us.